Hi guys, today's episode is unique in its own way. I assembled Type 7 C U boat submarine and made a diorama of a heavily rough sea. Revel submarine 350 scale, very simple and quick to assemble, unfortunately very average in terms of quality. I decided to make it as the U1004 from 1944. How does the idea for such a one part project come from? In fact, the ship mattered less. What I really wanted to do was to make a sea diorama with a technique different than before, this time with the use of modeling clay. In the end, it turned out that this material is not perfect for creating a sea effect, but it has its advantages, which I will talk about later in the video. The hull of the ship, as you can see, consists of three parts, which after gluing should be equipped with several elements, including the rudder at the bow, the propulsion system and the stern, as well as the rudders. Initially, I wanted to assemble the model without additional valorization, but when I saw the railings and some antennas, I found that I would try to improve its appearance a little. Edward P. said come with some help. I decided to replace some visible elements mainly on the conning tower and on the ship's deck. Photo edge elements were glued with ultra glue or CA glue depending on the expected setting time. I pasted the modernized conning tower and started painting. I used a white Tamiya primer, then Mr. Color and Hataka Orange series for the airbrush. It was the first time I used them and I must admit that it will not be the last. Hataka paints are in the bottles with a convenient applicator. There is a metal ball inside that makes it easier to mix the paint and they work very well with the Mr. Leveling thinner that I usually use. Just pay attention to the thinning of the paint. Taka Orange are very thin paints. In my case, a dilution of approximately 1 to 1, max 1 to 2 was perfect.
So I painted the ship, masking it appropriately, as well as additional elements such as periscopes or artillery, which also got a much better look thanks to Edward's set. I painted the deck with a brush using black, slightly lightened with white Vallejo paint. I also painted the small details on the conning tower and proceed to pasting the railings. I use sea eagle for this. The photo edge railing looks much better and despite the time spent it was definitely a good decision to use them. After gluing the artillery, I still had to make the last painting touches. I painted the characteristic yellow stripes on the deck and then decided to tone down the hull appearance a bit by applying vertical stripes with very diluted white paint. Thanks to this, the hull structure doesn't seem so uniform. After this treatment, I covered the entire model with glossy varnish and put decals on the conning tower. I also made light weathering using AK and Tamiya washes. The rigging remains. And I can consider the ship ready for launching. It may not be a work of art, but as I said, the U-boat was not the case in this project, right? Let's move on to the main part, diorama construction. First, as standard, I mark the ship's position and cut the required hole. As already mentioned, I decided to check the air drying modeling clay. Clay taken out of the sealed package is very easy to form and with a little water it can be smoothed out very nicely. Just remember to close the packaging tightly afterwards because you will have a stone the next day. When trying to make a diorama with the use of modeling clay, I wanted to make a very rough sea. On this scale we can even talk about a decent storm. It 
it seems that it would be easier to obtain the effect of high waves just using this type of clay. In fact, it was like that. The clay is easy to form and holds the shape well. After proper shaping and smoothening the surface, I was even satisfied with the effect. Unfortunately, after 24 hours, things were not so perfect. During drying, the mask cracked in many places, which would be rather difficult to ignore in the C diorama. Perhaps this was due to the use of flexible polystyrene as a support. Next time, I will definitely use a stiffer material. I evened the sides of the diorama a bit with an abrasive sponge, and there was nothing else for me to do but use the already proven aluminium foil. So I put Mod Podge glue and covered the entire stand with aluminium foil. After drying, I covered the foil again with glue, this time applying it with my fingers. As you can see, the application technique is irrelevant in this case, each time it dries, micro bubbles appear on the surface. I leveled them slightly using a torch, but after applying the primer and when it was completely dried, the bubbles were still visible. As you probably already know, Vallejo water texture covers such imperfections very well. The whole scene was supposed to show stormy weather, so I wanted to get the effect of a greyish green sea. I decided to try out two paints for this purpose. The Ocean Grey from Hataka and the XF17 Sea Blue Tamiya paint. The name Sea Blue is rather misleading here because it's actually closer to green. It doesn't change the fact that this color is perfect for creating water. I decided to do one more test and cover my diorama with a semi matte varnish. What I was thinking was that the water in stormy conditions, when completely cloudy, doesn't reflect light so much and doesn't shine as much as it does in sunny weather. After drying, this semi matte didn't suit me very well, so in the end I covered the hole with glossy varnish. I launched our U-boat and took care of the frame. 
I painted the balsa slats with a grey primer and then with silver paint. It's time for water effects. As standard, I used cotton wool and Vallejo water texture. Using water texture and still water also from Vallejo, I made transparent elements that were to simulate splashes or water overflowing through the hull. As you can see the ship is tilted slightly to starboard because the main impact of the waves is from her port side. So I decided to make such a hitting wave floating the ship's conning tower at the same time. I made the ship's nameplate in a simple way. I pasted a piece of steel foil on which I put decals and secured the plate with varnish. Using white paint, I created more splashes and foam effects to make it look more realistic. And here is the finished diorama. Am I happy with the effect? Rather yes, but as always I see some drawbacks. 
I'm glad that I tried the new technique, learned about its advantages and disadvantages. Unfortunately, I haven't found out whether the use of modeling clay alone would give a good effect. Perhaps I will check it again someday. However, there is one big advantage that clay gives. You can easily create the effect of a rough sea and high waves. Of course, using only the foil, we can also do it, but we run the risk of cracking because the foil itself will never be as stiff as the dried clay. I hope you liked the episode and that I surprised you a bit with one episode project. Let me know what you think about my vision of the storm, and if you liked what you see, please subscribe my channel and give a thumbs up. The next build will not be a one episode project, I am going back to the previous formula. I'm making a stepping stone from ships and we'll try something new again. In the meantime, hold on and see you guys in the next one. Bye.